lovely Floss Tube friends, welcome back to the channel. A very warm welcomes to you all and a very impromptu hello because this is sort of an unexpected video. Um, yeah, the only way that I could title this was May Madness because it is total madness and I know it, <laughs> but I don't care. <laughs> so for those of you that know, um, I recently had my total hip replacement. So I'm 11 days post-op. I had my staples took out this morning, so I've been a little bit more comfortable than I have done. That said, I'm still pretty dosed up on on drugs. That sounds awful, doesn't it? On medication. So, um, as you can see, the girls, stars of the show, <laughs> are on the day bed, hopefully with their little chew toys, and will give me long enough to chat with you about this video and and yeah, where I'm going with this, because this is very rare, very rare, very unusual, but I don't know, maybe I've just decided I'm throwing caution to the wind and I'm just going to go a little crazy. So I think that's exactly what's happened. So I apologize for that unglamorous affair. I haven't really made any effort. This was really impromptu because I was thinking maybe I'll do this video tomorrow because everyone's leaving the house and they're gonna leave me to my own devices. But then I was thinking well, I might not feel like it tomorrow and I sort of feel like it today. So, so yeah, so I just decided to wing it and just throw this together. So yeah, this could be one of those throw together videos. But the reason for the video, the title gives it away, May Madness, what can I say? Um, I have never, all the time that it was happening, did I ever, consider or attempt any type of mania purely because most of the time I'm pottering in the garden by now and I've got lots of stuff going on and I'm at work and yada yada and it just was never it was just never my thing to sort of start lots and lots and lots of things and I know that slowly but surely people have sort of adapted the mania to suit so some people are sort of you know only having one start a week or they're having you know a start a day I can't even imagine what that must be like um but I decided that I wasn't going to say that it's mania because it's not really mania it's more May madness I've just decided to go a bit mad this May and it's just literally this month for this month only I'm going to go a bit crazy now at first I thought I had a lot of whips on the go so therefore it was like well who who in their right mind is just going to go and start loads and loads of whips when she's already got so many that she never really gets to but Following a couple of conversations on some Zoom calls that I've done over the last few months, it's become rather apparent that I was sitting there thinking, you know, I've got lots and lots of whips. But in actual fact, I had 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. And then my latest edition, which was 16. So I only had 16 whips. And then when I was on these calls and the Zooms and everyone was sort of saying they're in their 20s or their 30s or more than that, I was like, I haven't really got that many. But the one thing I have got is most of mine are all really, really big projects or full coverage or big samplers that are going to take me forever. And I was like, why do I keep doing this to myself? And I was like, but I fancy starting some things. Now, the reason I think that this has come up is because whilst I've been off, I thought well, this is a perfect opportunity whilst I'm stuck, not moving around, to, to start looking at what I've actually got because I've moved out of what was the existing office and stroke stitchy room. It wasn't a stitchy room, it was just where I stored everything. And I've moved in here. Well, literally, all I've done was just threw it from one room to another. So there was an element of sorting that needed to happen and it wasn't until I started going through things that I was like, oh, I was looking for that. Oh, look at that, oh, I forgot I had that. And it became really apparent that I've actually got quite a few projects that I'd kitted that were waiting in the wings that I've never started. And I'm like, well, the problem with that is I then sort of get swayed later on down the line and go and buy something new and then have to kit the whole thing up without really realizing that I've actually got something that was equally, equally pleasing on the eye for me that I could have just started because I already had it. So I made the decision, executive decision. Do you like to make an executive decision? Um, executive decision was made, whilst drug induced, of course, um, that I was gonna select a number of my 
pre-existing kitted or partially kitted projects and just start them. No intention of worrying about when I'm going to finish them, just, just literally to start them. So I thought I'd share with you some of the ones that I've decided on for now. There may be more. Who knows? You know, if I carry on having drugs like I am now, that, that is highly possible. Highly possible. <laughs> but yeah, I'm not going to make any promises. But I have promised myself that I'm not going to worry about, you know, starting them and then thinking, oh no, what am I going to do about finishing them? Because it's not the point. The point isn't about finishing them, really. Well, it is eventually. But if I don't start them, then I will never finish them. That's that's where my mind, my mind is going. That's where I'm... That's the angle that I'm coming from. So I decided that this was the perfect opportunity whilst I was doing my sorting. I sorted out. So I've got these folders. Where are they? Uh, no, here, behind me here. These folders here that have now got all my charts in, which are now all ordered. Oh, loving the organisation. So I bought one of these little index box cards things. And in there, I've made my own little dividers. So I've got one for Hades. I've got one for specialty stitches i've got one for chatelaines i've got one for bella filipinas um ladies mermaids i've got one for smalls i've got one for long dog samplers one for seasonal one for mirabilias one for samplers and no doubt the list will get bigger so in this little box i've now recorded are you right there bonbons get up my sweets there we go um in this little box, this is the projects that I've currently got going and I've put all the details about my projects on these little cards so that when I do my floss tube videos, I don't have to keep saying, oh, I can't remember what I was stitching it on or when I started it because I'm just going to pull the cards when I'm showing the project so that it makes it easier. So I'm loving all this organisation, but one of the things that did become apparent is that I didn't really realise what, what I've got as stash. I didn't realise what, what charts I've got and then when obviously I started looking through my charts, it was like, not only was I looking through my charts, but I was looking through my charts and then I was realizing actually, that's already kitted. That's fully kitted. So then I've got not just charts, I've just got, I've got kitted projects and partially kitted projects. And all they needed was a bit of fabric or a bit of floss. So I was like, this doesn't make any sense because I keep just going and buying more charts and then thinking, right, now I've got to kit those things up. When in actual fact, I've already got certain stuff that is really ready. I'm waiting in the wings. So, I digress. I, I threw caution to the wind and decided that since I'm laid up anyway, and I've been doing some sorting, I would take this opportunity to pick out some of the stuff that I, I know I've definitely got that was either mostly kitted, well, all of it was mostly kitted, or stuff that I already had here in stash that I could pull together to make it become fully kitted. And decided that I will start making starts, do a bit on them, and then and then don't worry, don't worry. They you know they take as long as they take. What I haven't done is I haven't added any full coverages to that. Now I know that there are some full coverages that I have waiting in the wings that have been kitted. One being um, a rack of all things, um, fully kitted. All I needed to do was throw the fabric with it. But because I've got so many full coverages that are still on the go that I do want to sort of, I need to clear at least one of those before I start another one, or at least that's where my brain is at the moment. I'm holding back on that. But like I say, there's no promises. <laughs> never say never. <laughs> so where to start, people? So for those of you that follow me on Instagram, you would have seen that I've already started sort of posting the ones that I decided that I was going to start. Um, because at the time, the only thing that I could function with was was Instagram because it was just do some pretty pictures. And that was it. That was about the most of my social media. And then I'd go to sleep for, I'd go napping. Um, so this one was one of the ones that I think I'd already said that I was definitely going to use as a new start whilst I was laid up because it's going in the dressing room. So it is this one. It's the High Heels Collection. She says, if I can get it right, there we go. High Heels Collection 2 by Soda Stitch. Would you believe it? I had all the threads. I pre-ordered all that in and then I ordered the fabric in. I had this huge bit of fabric 
And I was like, yep, I've got enough to get two, two of these on because I've got High Heels Collection 2 and High Heels Collection 3 that need to be finished so that they can all three hang uh, in my dressing room, one above the other. So I ordered the fabric. I started stitching on it. And then I, I was sitting there and I was saying to my husband, and I was like, this doesn't look right to me. I said, is it look right to you? And he was like, what do you mean? So I said, well, I said, the stitches look huge. So I'm pretty sure the one upstairs that's, that I've already done, like High Heels Collection 1, I'm pretty sure that the stitches aren't that big. So anyway, he's done nothing more, love him, and go upstairs, go and get it for me, brought it down. I'd already started stitching it, only to find I'd ordered the wrong fabric. So instead of ordering 28 count, even weave, I ordered 25 count because that was what I thought they were on. It wasn't. So I had to wait for the fabric to come, which I must admit, um, there is a company, a new company that I've started using. Um, she is really, really lovely. The shipping seems to be really, really fast and she always responds to me really quickly and it is called, she says. So it is called Create Nostalgia. Um, I was really quite impressed with the service. There's lots of things on there that she does. Um, everything from just pins, hoops, frames, bell pulls, scissors. Um, the by Jupiter, uh, just another button um, company. She does the Mary Jane collection of black work, crawl, cross stitch, silk ribbons, gold work, stump work, kits, Mill Hill beads, treasures, books, kits, frames, perforated paper. She does fabric. Um, yeah, she does the little Mill Hill pieces. Um, what else did she do? She does some cross stitch, cross stitch patterns and charts. She does some even weaves, Jublin, um, Zweigart. What else does she do? Yeah, the line tablecloths. Bonbons, can you come off there, please? Come on, on the bed. On the bed. Up you go. On the bed. As you can see, children are not behaving themselves. I knew this would happen. On the bed. Go on. Up you go. All right, sit there. Um. So yeah, she does. Oh, and she does threads. So she's got threads. She's got um, Weeks Dye Works, DMCs, Gentle Arts, Karen Collection, Karen Color Works. Yeah. So she does a load of stuff. I ordered a really big chunk of 28 count even weave and literally I think it turned up in three days. It was it was fabulous service. So I didn't have to wait long. But we did make a start on it. So as I say, this is the chart, High Heels Collection 2. And this is where I've got to. So I'm going to apologise about the light because I'm actually doing this at, what time is it? 8 o'clock at night, Saturday night. So I'm, I'm relying on um, fake light. <laughs> So there's probably lots of shadows. But as you can see, I've made a start on the middle. That middle. That middle shoe there. But yeah. So finally, at last, the High Heels collection has started. And I'm loving it. So that is my first new start of May Madness. Then I got sent down another little rabbit hole by the lovely, oh, who is it that dragged me down this? This was Ladybird, or handmade by Ladybird, so Jo. Um, she's the lady that makes some of the bags. I'll show you, where are, where are the bags? She's made me, oh, she's made me a beautiful bag. Look at this. Look at my project bag with the little tassel. It's beautiful, isn't it? It's got like a little... It's got nice plain black on the inside. Um, there's a little um, project bag that goes inside that as well. But love, love, love. Um, but not only does she make that, but she <laughs> she made these and I had to have one because I was just like, it's like such a deal breaker. It's one of these little, little basket things. Look, it's got little spools and needles on it. Obviously the bits of thread hanging, that's me because I've been using this like to just throw bits and pieces in especially at the moment where I'm sort of I'm struggling to get around and I'm struggling to I have to be super organized and have everything within reach because I can't bend down and I can't bend to the left so yeah so she's the lady that makes these but anyway she 
was showing me that she'd started a new long dog sampler and because I fell down the rabbit hole, went on the long dog sampler um, website, saw a chart and fell in love because it was just, I don't know, it was resonating with me, totally resonating with me. For those of you that have already seen the video, I think I've done a stitch with me on this. See, I'm saying I think, I know I did, but yeah, drugs people. Um, pain killing drugs, what can I say? So this one is um, the new, I think it's a new one by Long Dog Sampler. So this is Tap Dancers. I will put a picture here because I haven't got one to hand. And I absolutely love this. And I love the fabric that I'm doing it on as well. Although the fabric is huge. It's a huge piece of fabric. And this is where we've got to. She says, I don't know if I can get it any closer. There we go. So yeah. It's a bit hard to get the right angle in this light, people. So, and that is being stitched on a fabric by Stephanie's in the colorway April Showers, I believe. It is April Showers. And the thread that I'm using there is uh, Silks For You PR109, which is that one. And that's true to colour, what you can see there. Love, love, love. Love, love, love. Um, so I've made a good start on that. Like I said, more ma madness going on. Let's stick that one up there out of the way. Um, what else have I started? So then I decided that I obviously don't have enough ladies in my life. <laughs> and I thought... Do you know what? I saw this, I fell in love with it when I was at the Mirabilia, not Mirabilia retreat. There was a young lady that was stitching it there. Do you remember when I'd done the walk around in the room and I was showing everyone the projects? Um, I absolutely fell in love with it and she was stitching on it and it is a Botanical Gardens by Mirabilia. Is it? Yeah, Botanical Gardens. So this one I started on the 5th of May um and it's a 28 count fabric by sparklies i think it was one of the um what was it fabric of the month special january 2020 so it's 28 count opalescent even weave there we go so i had all the threads here's all my threads all good and ready to go You'll notice there's still some bobbinated. This is where, you know, I was saying to you that I'm using my thread keeps uh, for my projects, but I'm still in the processes of switching over from everything that was bobbinated to these. So everything that I've got that's on a bobbin, I'm actually putting to use whilst it's still on the bobbin because I can't bring myself to unravel them all and try and hang them and then try and get the kinks out. So I'll just deal with them off of this and slowly but surely transition over. But there's more to tell you about my storage as part of my organization. You'll notice behind me there's these boxes and I fell down another little rabbit hole about some of my storage, but more more about that in another video. Maybe I'll touch on that on my, my floss tube update at the end of the month. Um, so yeah, so on here there are some bobbins and there are some keeps. And the ones that are on bobbins, I'm just intending to use up as much as I can. And then when they run out, then obviously they'll go on to a, a different storage system. So, but love the colours. So that's the colours. And this is where I've got to. And would you believe, I don't know what possessed me. You know, it's like, it's like an afterthought, a total afterthought. I don't know what possessed me to do this. But I decided that... Originally, I said I was going to do a skin two over two, just as charted on Mirabilia's. And then I was like, I don't know why I decided to do it another way. But I think it's Luda. I was watching one of her videos once and she said that instead of doing the skin full cross one over one, she does tent stitch two over one to get the coverage. And obviously it's supposed to move faster, which it does. Me and my wisdom decided I was going to give her version a try. So you can barely see it, but there's lots of it. You just can't tell because it's so small. 
but this is where we've got to. So see that little splodge? That little splodge there, let's get a bit closer. <gasps> that little splodge there, believe it or not, is skin. Because it's just my luck that we actually start the project in the middle of her head. But yeah, that's that's my token gesture. But there's a lot of stitches there. But because it's one over one, it's tiny weeny. And I don't think you can see the opalescent sparkle, can you, in this fabric? I'm sure once I get this recorded in some sort of daylight, you'll actually be able to see it better. But I love the fabric. So again, Sparkly's fabric, fabric of the month special, um, January 2020, that fabric. Um, so I don't think it's one that you could just pick up. But absolutely loving that. So we've made a little start on that one. Plonk that one down there. Um, with I've done the High Heels collection, haven't I? You can see how organised I am, right? You can tell. You can tell. Um, so, yeah, so there's three projects already. And where are we? We're at the 7th. The 7th of, of May. So then I was looking at other projects and I'm like, well, what what should I do next? You know, what's, what's my next best option? Um... And although I sort of was thinking, yeah, I want to start all the things, it was like, well, I want to start all the things, but I don't want to start all the things. I only want to start on things that I'm either almost fully kitted or stuff that's really shouting at me. And one of the charts that really did shout at me, and I did fall down a rabbit hole on this, and a very dear friend um, who goes to the Mirabilia retreats um, and loves the ladies, uh, Gina Miller, you know who you are, totally enabled me when she showed me a mermaid that she's stitching. And I've never really been one for mermaids, especially when I've looked at the Mirabilia mermaids. I've never really sort of liked them, but not really enough to sort of spend the time to stitch one. However, she showed me what she was stitching and I fell in love, people. Fell in love. And it is Maiden of... I can't even say it. Tabatia. Well, I'm not. I'm not even going to butcher the name. But it's a Bella Filipina rather than a Mirabilia. Here's the chart. If I can do this without too much glare, because it's got the cellophane on it. I don't think you can see the ego. Um, I fell in love once she showed me her chart. I fell down the rabbit hole. I ordered all the things. So I've got. The full kit here, all of the Kynix, um, the specialty threads, the DMCs, the beads. So the only thing that I'm now waiting on is the fabric. So because I was undecided on the two fabrics, because when I went on to pole stitches, pole stitches recommended, because they also sell the chart, they, they recommended um, Aphrodite, I think, for the fabric. Which, when I looked on the fabric view, I was like, well, I like it, but I, I don't love it. I don't think it, I, don't, I didn't think that it was quite as as dark fabric as this is. And I quite like the fact that this is a darker fabric. Um, so I also looked at Atlantis, which is another really dark colour. Um, both in even weaves. I've ordered both because it will be sod's law. Um... I've contacted Pole Stitches to find out roughly how long it was. And I think she said there was roughly a five week turnaround because the sizes of the fabric that I needed were bigger than what she had in stock that was showing on the Etsy store. Because um, Pole Stitches have got some which are stock items which are already ready to be shipped on Etsy. But they can also do the ones that are organised through the website which are like ones that you have to wait to be dyed and shipped. Um, so yeah, so they came back to me super, super quickly when I asked the question, no pressure. I just sort of said, can you give me a rough idea of what the lead time is? She said, it's around five weeks. So I'm like five weeks. Okay. And bearing in mind that I think I placed my order back in April, um, for the fabric because I sort of had an idea that I wanted to make a start on this in May because I was going to be off. Um, 
but oh, I love that. So all I'm doing now is waiting for the fabric in the hope that it arrives sometime in May. If it arrives sometime in May, this bad boy will be started. One of the things I've sort of said to myself is anything that I don't start in May, once I get past May and into June, can't be started. Don't ask me why I've come up with that, but I've decided. I've decided everything that I want to start that's new without finishing something else first has to happen in May. I'm just going to allow for a matter. <laughs> I'm just going to allow for total May madness. This is why I'm calling it May madness because it is utter madness. I'm like, it can be started in May. Anything that I choose can be started in May. But if it falls outside of May, then it can't be started because at that point it's like now you have to pull your horns in, Teresa. Now you have to behave yourself. So I'm allowing just this month to just go a little crazy. So that will be another start. Um, and yeah, and I'm super excited about that one. Super excited about that one. Um, sorry about the rustling people, but it's all got to go back in the box. So as soon as the fabric turns up for that, that will become another start. So hopefully, in fact, who am I kidding? Even if the fabric doesn't turn up until early June, for this one particular, I'll still start it. Just because. Just because I did everything in my power to make it start in May, okay? So that's that's how I'm going to sell that to myself. And I'm sure you can all agree with me on that. Um, what else have we got? So other ones that I have actually got here that I'm, I'm pretty sure that are on my... They're going to be added to the new start list. And like I say, I'm not necessarily having a new start every day. I'm not having a new start a week even. I'm just starting things that I've, I've pulled things out that I've definitely got kitted that won't cost me money to, to, to start because I've already got everything. Um, just if I, if I feel like it. And bearing in mind that I'm sort of sitting there telling myself in my brain, anything that you want to start trees that needs to be started in May. Because unless you then finish something going forwards, you can't start something else. That's, that's how I've sort of got it in my head. So based on that, the ones for sure that I'm definitely going to start this month are the um, Nora Corbett um, Cream and Sugar. Here they are, my teacups. I've got a perfect place for those that's on a wall that's between my kitchen um, and my living room and with these you can sort of you don't have to have them in blocks of two in this direction you could have them as singles but what I'm going to do is I'm going to have them in blocks one above the other so displayed like number three here see this one that's how I'm going to have them um, and the first one that I'm starting on is this one down here so ferns and tulips and I'm just going to use some white even weave for that. Probably a 28 count. 28 count white even weave. I'm loving the colours for this one. Um, this one I've had for ages and really wanted to do it. It was just finding the right time. But yeah, can't wait for that. So that's going to be a new start. Probably in the next couple of weeks. Because at the moment I'm still really enjoying working on the, the new start, new starts. <laughs> What else? Um, the other thing that I was definitely going to start, which again is one that's been kitted like forever. This is one of the ones that was at the bottom of the drawer. It was in one of these plastic folders. So that's how long. I mean, that's got to have been four or five years worth of sat in the bottom of a drawer saying that's a new start ready and kitted. And I completely forgot about it. How embarrassing is that? Um, so this one is... Probably anyone that's followed me for a length of time will know that I had this. And I, I keep saying that I was going to start it and never have. So this is my Just Nan Crystal Roses. Here it is. And I've got all the threads at the ready. And I've even decided on the fabric. Here's the fabrics. Chromatic Alchemy fabric. 28 can opalescent Lugana in colorway ether, I think it's called. Ether. Oh, I don't know. Is it? 
I think it's A E T H E R, is what I think that says. I don't know. You have to help me out, guys. Like I said, I'm on drugs. <laughs> So that is definitely being started because I've been saying that I'm going to start that for years. And it's really small. It's, it's a really small project. So why haven't I started it? I have no idea why I've not started that. And it's got some specialty stitches in it as well. So that's just up my street and it's got beads in it. So, so that is definitely going to be started. I mean, and I know that that was, that, that sort of was like at the bottom, the real bottom and back of one of the drawers. And I was like, oh, wow, I forgot about that. How many of you do that? Do you sort of, have you all got it well catalogued so that you know exactly what you've got and where it is? I mean, that's one thing I've done. So all of these, these files behind me, I've now got everything sort of categorized. So I've got a list so that I can look through the list of things just in case I'm out and I'm thinking I'm going to start something, but I'll need to see a list if I haven't got time to come and look through the boxes. But what I've done is I've separated these down so that, like I say, one's, one's for smalls, one's seasonal, one is hard hanger and drawn thread and specialty stitches, um, one is ladies, mermaids and those sorts of things. What else have I got in there? Um, yeah, but I've categorised them more to me. So that if I fancy doing something other than cross stitch, then I'll go straight to that box and I've got that. If I fancy doing a mermaid, a lady or a mirabilia or something like that, it'll be in there. If I fancy doing a small, then it'll be in the other one. And, and then it will be, if it's seasonal, so if I want to do something like summer, autumn, winter, spring, or it's got that type of theme to it, that's in my seasonal. So I've, I've tried to make it so that... I'm organised so that when I decide I want to start something, because I think that's one of the biggest problems that I've had is I've sort of sat there thinking, oh, it'd be nice to have a nice new start of something small. But then I'm like, well, I don't know what I've got. And then when I've had a little look through, I was like, oh, I quite like that. Oh, but I've got to get all this stuff. And then I'm like, oh, it's not worth it. Because at the time, it was just a whim. It was just a moment of like, moment of weakness is that what it was <laughs> it was a moment i was having a moment and i thought oh, i fancy starting something new but then i only start i only fancy starting something new providing i had all the stuff and i could just quickly grab all the things and then it was like well i haven't got all the stuff so then i've got to order some stuff and then then i've got to be patient and then by then the moment would have passed and i wouldn't necessarily want a new start so because that was the way i was i think i was i had all these things that really were perfectly good things that i would love to start i just hadn't kitted them but then I didn't really know what I had. And then my answer to everything was, well, if I'm going online to order some stuff, I might as well just order a whole thing with the chart. And just, and then I would buy something completely new. And then not touch any of the stash that I've actually got. Which sort of defeats the object of having stash, I think. So, the one thing it has done as well is... Um, I've actually really looked through what I've got and wheedled out some of the things that... Back in the day, I really liked and was adamant I would definitely start them. And then now I'm like, no, not really feeling that. So there may be some things that pop up as giveaways in videos throughout the course of this year. Because there'll be things that I originally had thinking that I would start them. And then it's become really apparent that I'm not going to. For whatever reason, either that they're just not floating my boat now or I'm just not feeling it now. You know. We, I mean, I don't know about you, my, my, my taste is, is changing, has changed. I mean, I would never have dreamt about samplers. And now I've got how many samplers? I've got the Kings and Queen one. I've got the Elizabeth Weston. Um, then obviously I've got the Long Dog samplers. They're slightly different because I don't consider them sampler samplers, although they are. They're not like the other samplers. Um, and then blow me, I've decided in my wisdom that because I have a full kitted kit of our forest embroidery um this one the cherry orchard there it is this one i know the reason that i didn't start this as soon as i got it and that was intimidation people totally and utterly completely intimidated i cannot even begin to tell you i was thinking oh it's so lovely and i'm so excited because it is it's gorgeous i mean look at this gorgeousness look at it fabulous stuff 
Loving the colour of the fabric, that's washed out. Don't take any notice of that picture of that fabric. I'll show you in proper daylight one day. That is more of like a, it's more limey green than that. That It's not that colour. Um, but the total intimidation was the instructions. As soon as I read the instructions, as soon as I got to that bit, I was like, oh dear, put it back in its box. And I've not looked at it since. But now I'm like, well, okay. Given that I'm on so many drugs at the moment still, that's probably not one to start just yet. But I'm hoping that over the next week or so, my levels of discomfort will be, oh, see, I'm trying to move now. My levels of discomfort will reduce massively. Um, and then I can start reducing my drugs. And then when I, once I've reduced them down, then I will tackle this because, yeah, you really do need to read the chart to get this right, I think. Or at least from what I looked at. Especially scenes as I think most of it's in foreign, in foreign. In, I mean, there, it is English as well, so it's not it's not that hard. It's just me. It's just me. I just got overwhelmed by it and was just like, oh no, put it back in the box. <laughs> So there you go, people. That explains my main madness. Now, how many is that? So we've got the Log Dog Sampler. We've got the High Hills Collection. We've got Botanical Gardens. We've got the Crystal Rose. We've got the Teacups. We've got the new mermaid. My first ever mermaid, let me say. Hang on, where we got to? I've got to recount again. <laughs> oh, dear. I would love to say that it's a lady of a certain age, but it's beyond that. It's a lady of a certain age, post-surgery, whilst on drugs. Um, okay, so let's try this again. So we've got the Long Dog Sampler. We've got the High Hills Collection. You've got Botanical Gardens. You've got the Sugar and Cream. We've got the New Bella Filipina. So that's five. We've got the Crystal Rose. That's six. And we've got the Al Forest Embroidery. So that is seven. So we will definitely be having seven new stars, regardless. can't guarantee that will be all i mean it depends on how mad my my madness goes it could go super mad i could be that is my madness you know seven is more than enough i mean seven on top of what i've already got that's arguably still mad for me for me specifically i mean i'm probably not in comparison to anybody else but for me that's that's total madness yeah so there you go um Wish me luck. <laughs> uh, what is the plan? So the plan, the plans, the plan is continue as I am. Improve massively from a mobility perspective. Start all the things and see where I get to. And during all of that, hopefully, if time allows, um, and these little cutesies, oh, look, they've gone to sleep, love them. Look at them. They've gone to sleep. I'm sleeping girls you better sleep tonight um if these two behave themselves and allow for it i will get lots of stitching done which means the more stitching i get done probably the more starts i'll have um and then what i will do is i will probably try if they carry on behaving like this to do some more stitch with me possibly some stitch with me lives later in the month but I can't guarantee that because they could create carnage and I would hate for that to happen. Um, but then at the end of the month, I will do um, my usual floss tube update. So I'll probably do May's floss tube update at the end of the month just so that I can include all the May madness and all the new starts. And by the end of May, I'll be able to say, right, that is it. There's the line. Now I have to stop. Now I have to show restraint and not start anything new until I actually finish something. So yeah, that's the plan, people. So welcome to my May Madness. <laughs> I hope you're all having a wonderful Saturday night. Probably you won't actually see this until Sunday though. So, cause today is the 7th of May um, at nearly half past eight at night. So yeah, chances of me getting this done and uploaded before now or by, by, by tonight, my time um, might struggle a little bit. But who knows? You might get lucky. If I if I if I carry on just sitting here, I could probably quickly whiz it together for you. Um and you might see a Saturday. But if not, you're seeing this on Sunday. 
in which case continue having a wonderful weekend everybody um weather here has been mildly nice for for, for once it's actually mild enough to sort of wear some vesty type tops with a little cardigan over the top it's not it's not that warm that i can go like in t-shirts and shorts um but it is definitely getting a lot more mild now so it's not you don't freeze to death to go outside so yeah so whatever your weekend brings you i hope it's fun happiness stitching um and doing all the things but yeah so wish me luck and keep an eye on instagram because I'm, I'm pretty sure that as and when i start a new one i will post it so you'll get a little insight as to which ones i'm starting and and when and if there's any additions that i haven't already shared with you um again like i say i'll try to do some stitch with me videos possibly some stitch with me live videos if the girls allow um but yeah lovely lovely to actually do a video and let you know what i'm all doing but other than that i'm doing fine and no doubt you're all doing fine so on that note i'm gonna go um have a lovely weekend happy stitching everyone and until next time bye bye for now